everyone. Thanks for having me. My name is Maria Lamardo. I'm a front-end engineer at Pendo, an instructor at View School, and the worldwide events manager at View Vixens. I am also very involved in uh, meetup events and uh, community organizing in my hometown. And I am also a board certified assistant behavior analyst. So I provided behavioral therapy for people with developmental disabilities for eight years before I moved into development. And I really understand the struggles and frustrations that a lot of users with disabilities get from trying to navigate uh, applications that are not accessible. Hence, my passion for web accessibility. So let's get started. What is web accessibility and who should worry about it? So the web was actually designed to work for everyone, regardless of language, ability, uh, software, hardware, or location. And when we are building accessible applications, we're actually working towards that goal. Now, there's, all, there's ta different types of disabilities. There's motor, cognitive, auditory, and visual disabilities. And when you're creating applications, you have to take all of these into consideration. And different types of disabilities will have different ex user experience when navigating to your websites. So when you're thinking and uh, trying to come up with techniques for accessibility, you don't only have to look at screen readers, but think a little bit wider than that, like people who are uh, maybe colorblind or have motor impairments that like, um, maybe make it a little bit difficult to just use a mouse. Um, I have this color wheel here, and I actually have this application called Color Oracle, which will allow me to simulate different types of color blindness. So I do want to show you this to show how different colors can be perceived depending on the type of color blindness you have. Um, so I really want to point out that you shouldn't rely on color alone to give uh, users that information. You should always have an alternative way to um, uh, show information other than color. Another thing you, um, you should pay attention to is your heading structure. A lot of uh, assistive technology is able to navigate your application by headings, uh, so making sure that you're using heading correctly. Uh, so you can start with an H1, which is the most important, all the way down to H6. And you want to make sure that you're not skipping any headings and that you can nest them inside by ranks. So for example, so you have, uh, after your heading, you have two sections in your, in your site. Um, both of those sections, since they are sibling, can both start like at an age two. And then you can nest uh, headings inside of each of those. Another way users can navigate your site is by the use of landmarks. Um, and there are a lot of HTML uh, elements that are semantic for this. So like the header tag, nav, main, footer, or a side. Now, there's a couple of issues with single page applications when it comes to accessibility. Um, because we have client-side JavaScript to handle the routing, the, every time you route, it doesn't automatically refresh the page, and, uh, which will automatically have had um, announced it to the screen reader that there was a new page route, as well as it would have handled the focus for you. But there are solutions to this. Uh, with the use of ARIA Live regions, you can um, uh, help announce to screen readers that uh, new content has been loaded as well as uh, being able to handle the focus. And we've talked about the different types of disabilities, and different users have different experience with this, and there are a lot of different techniques that can help a certain group of people over others. And there was actually a really good accessibility research done by Marcy Sutton with um, Fable Tech Labs, and she actually released an article about this. You should totally read it, and it's called What We Learned from User Testing of, Accessi of Accessible client Size Routing Techniques with Fable Tech Labs. And they went over different types of examples and implementations on um, announcements and routing, uh, like focus management as well, with different uh, users with different types of disabilities. And their findings were very interesting. And today, I have made an application, which I will show you, and I will go over some of the techniques covered in this study. So this is a simple application. It's kind of a memory game. Um, and you can open tiles, and you can see what's in them. And if you don't match them, they will kind of close themselves. And if you match them, um, which maybe I won't find a match, but <laughs> um, yeah, so um, when you match them, then it, it will stay open and stay up on the screen. Now I'm going to turn on my screen reader to show you what this experience looks like. Oh, also, um, there's a route happening, so there's an instruction page that tells you the instructions of the game as well as how to generate certain scores. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and turn on my screen reader. Voice over on Chrome, matching game. For those of you who have never heard of screen reader, you can always uh, speed it up or slow it down. 
Um, but this one I'm using, it's voiceover and it's installed in all the Macs. Reset button main. Visited link. Instructions. Chrome has new window. Visited link. So I actually, nothing's happening. I'm going to press the new route. So you could see that I wasn't really informed of anything. I'll try Visited that again. Link. In so nothing's happening. Let's go, link. let's go back to the game. And I'm muting it from here uh, so that I could talk over it. Um, I'll go into the game so you guys could see what that feels like. Visited link. Reset button main. Question button. List 16 items. Question button. Question button. Question button. So that means nothing to me if I was blind and I couldn't see where my focus was on the page. I can't tell one question mark button from another, right? So um, we are lacking a lot of, um, like the, the user off. experience here is not great. So let's take a look at our application and see how we can change this. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually I'm going to go in my routes and add some metadata into my routes. So I've given it a title and a description, which will be used um, by search engines to read the, the description of my content for each page. And then I'm updating the title before each route. So by doing this, and I'll kind of switch this over, um, by doing this, you can see that if I just inspect the head, and then I'll do a reroute, and let me just zoom this in. OK, cool. Um, you can see that now the page title changes as I go from one route to another. Another thing we want to do is make sure that the screen reader is also picking up on these changes. So uh, I have in here inserted, so this is like the app.view, which is holding on my application. And in there, I have added this. Can you guys see that? Fine. Let me just zoom in. Um, I have added this element, which has a role of status. Before I explain that, let's go back to the slides for a little bit. So let's talk about ARIA Live regions. Uh, ARIA Live regions are used to announce non-interactive content changes. And there's three different types. Um, ARIA Live Assertive which will interrupt the user flow, meaning that if you're using a screen reader and your screen reader is currently reading some sort of content and a, a new um, element comes in uh, with an ARIA assertive, it's going to interrupt that user flow, so it's not going to finish reading whatever it was currently on, and it's going to announce this new message. Whereas ARIA Life Polite will wait for you to finish that message and then tell you the message after that is done. And of course, the default, which is ARIA Life Off. But when you're using role status, it actually behaves the same as ARIA Live Polite, which, again, will update announcements when the user um, has finished reading anything that they're currently doing. So let's go back to our application. So again, I have given this um, route announcement, which I am updating here. I am mean, watching the route change. And every time the route changes, then I am doing this. And, um, it's best practice to hide this from the user uh, visibly, like there's no need for this, but I have uh, made it available so you guys can see it um, appearing right there. So let's zoom in so you guys can see what the screen reader would read. So I'm actually going to turn Voice it on. Voice over on Chrome, visited link, home, Chrome, home page loaded, visited link, instructions, instructions page loaded. So you could see that's already a lot better for the users. Voice over off. I'll turn off the screen reader. And another thing that I want to change is the sol making sure that the user is aware which, uh, which of the links, if we have a lot of links, which of them is currently active. And we can do this by giving an, ARIA, uh, an attribute of ARIA current which, with the value of page. And I'll go back to my slides and talk about this a little bit. ARIA current is used to indicate an, a current item on a, on a set. And there's different types. There's page, uh, step, location, date, and time. Right now, we're looking at a page, which is a current link. Um, so let's go back to our application. Um, so you can see that I've already given in an attribute. And if I look at my tools here, um, yeah, so I'm inspecting. And you could see that this one currently has uh, ARIA current. And then after you update the route, you could see that it changes to the current route. So I will go ahead and turn on my screen reader. Voice over on Chrome, reset button, page changed, slide 13, visited link. Visited link, instructions, visited link, home. So that's weird, right? I gave it a uh, current, but it reads the same. Visited link, visited link. I actually have no idea which one is activated right now. So I, I am using Chrome, and I am using VoiceOver. So Safari, if I go to Safari, game, home space with Safari contained. 
Current page, visited link, current page, visited link, home, visited link, instructions. Current page, visited link. So you guys see that Safari was able to pick it up, and it told Voice me that the off. current link was the home link. And that's a really cool point, right? Like, I thought if it works on one browser, why wouldn't it work on another? Well, actually, different screen readers have different compatibilities with certain browsers. So depending on what your screen reader you're using, uh, you might not see certain functionalities depending on the browser that you're using. And these are the di different types of screen readers, the most popular ones. And NVDA, NVDA, which is a free one, if you're a Windows user, this is a great choice, um, works best with Firefox. JAWS, which uh, is a paid one, it works best with Internet Explorer, and VoiceOver, which is installed in every Mac, which is what I'm using today, it works best with Safari. So that's why you might not see all of the functionalities that are currently um, in place uh, in other browsers. Okay, now let's move on to the next step. Ooh. Okay. okay, so in this one, I want to focus on focus management and what happens to that focus when we uh, change our routes. So I'll actually open up um, our app. Okay, so again, in my app.view, I have added this, um, which is a slip, uh, skip link to main content. Um, so whenever I am here, I am able to skip to the main content, and I am actually um, on route change. I will be focusing, uh, bringing focus back to this. So let's see what that looks like. Oh, sorry, opened up a new window. Okay. <laughs> So you could see that the focus went immediately over there, and if I press enter, it's going to go back to the main. Um, so I have two main right now. Uh, I have one in the instructions page right here, uh, main ID, and then I have one in the home page uh, for, the, for the game. Now let's talk a little bit about tab indexing so that you guys can see why certain things are happening. Um, so tab indexing. Okay. So tab index will indicate that an element, uh, whether an element can be focused and it's sequential order. So there is tab index of zero, which makes the element focusable by a keyboard in the DOM order. So let me um, show you what that looks like. So I'm going to create a paragraph that is just like normal. Yeah. And then I'm going to create another paragraph um, that say that I'm going to call it like tab index of zero. And I'm going to give it a tab index of zero as well. So I'm going to save that, go back to our application in the home page. So you guys can see that I have a normal paragraph and then a, a tab index of zero. So I'm going to just tab through. And you guys see that I was able to get to that second paragraph that has a tab index of zero, but not the normal paragraph. So you can see that that gets added just in the normal DOM order. Now there's also a tab index of positive numbers, so anything greater than zero. Uh, from one to infinity. And then this will allow these elements to be focusable, but it's going to jump the order in front of the DOM. So let's take a look at that. Um, so I'll actually do like one and two. And I'll save that. And I'll refresh so the focus is out in the body. And I'm going to tab the first time. And then you could see that it went to the element that had tab index of one. If I tab again, it's going to go to tab index of two. And then after you are done with all of your positive like, numbers, then it's going to go back to the regular DOM order. Now, I will say that this is something that you absolutely want to avoid, as uh, people who are using assistive technology are going to have a hard time navigating like this. I'm just showing you, but uh, really, really never, try, never use uh, tab index of any positive numbers. And if you run an audit on the Lighthouse tool, it will pick, pick it up if you have anything greater than zero. There is also tab index of negative one, which allows the element to be focused programmatically. And let me show you what that means. Um, so again, I will have the same thing, but instead of, um, I will have a negative one. So I'm going to go through the same flow, tab, tab, going back to the DOM order, and then I am never really accessing that tab index of negative one. Uh, but let's say if I give this a rev of like tab here, um, then in my new game, yep, here, I am just going to focus. on this element. Uh, oh, thanks, thanks, thanks. <laughs> okay, so um, when I hit the reset, it will automatically lead me back to negative one. 
Um, and you see that that has like an in, uh, like the ring, focus ring. And if I delete that negative one, even though I have the ref, everything is set up, it will not focus. And my focus is remaining on the button because it, I have not added it to the sequence. Um, so that's why uh, when, when we're you know, navigating to main, and if I delete this, and this is in the home, right? So when I go to instructions, it's still going to, well, let's see. Yeah. Um, so when you see that I took away the main, it's not even focusing in, in there. And I'm going to open up this tool that allows me to keep track of everything that I'm focusing on in, in the page. Um, so again, if I go, this should really go to main. It's really, the focus is just in the body. It's, it's really nowhere. Um, so that's why that's like different case, use cases for using negative one, tab index of negative one. Okay, so um, let's move on to the next step. Okay, so one thing that we haven't handled yet is how the user experience looks like for actually playing the game. Um, so let's go to our home. Um, yep. So I started by making sure that everything has an accessible name. And I did this by using things like uh, ARIA label, I used an ARIA described by somewhere, and then an, uh, ARIA, lab an ARIA labeled by. Um, and let's talk about that. Um, so accessible names, and actually, yeah, I'll show you the browser tools in a little bit, but then there's different types, and there's many more. Um, but uh, let's talk about ARIA label. When you give something an ARIA label, it will provide like the information about that element, and you usually want to use ARIA label when that content doesn't appear on the page. So for example, if you have like, you know, the X button that is just kind of like a cross that you can close something, there's, if your page doesn't contain somewhere that actually has written out close, you usually want to give that little icon an ARIA label of close. Whereas ARIA labeled by, which works very similarly, actually uh, kind of uh, establishes a relationship between uh, objects, and you compare them by ID. So if you had a close button, and for some reason you had a paragraph somewhere that said close, or if it was a label somewhere, you could say uh, ARIA labeled by and match it with that ID, and it will grab that name as the accessible name. And ARIA described by uh, is also paired by an ID, and it can provide additional information um, to a specific element. So um, I have added the ARIA label for the button. So, so these are kind of the cards. So if the card is flipped, I'm going to say the card name and, and that it is flipped. And if it's not flipped, then I'm just going to say card and the number of the card. So I will go back to the application and Voice turn on my screen reader. Memory, yet you are online. Page changed. Slides. Card one button list 16 items. Card two button. Card three button. Card four button. So already, at least I'm able to keep track of where everything is on the page. Voice over off. Now, when it comes to actually playing the game, uh, let's go to the, f well, I have actually added another announcer, another announcement, and this one is for the game, but it works the same way as the route change announcement. Um, and if you look here, I've actually started changing them inside of this function. So I'll do this so it's easy to see. Um, but you can see that at first I just kind of reset it, then say, uh, if the card's already flipped, say that it's already been flipped. If you flip it, then say the card name and flipped. If you match it, say uh, specific card name matched or flipped, match found, and then the number of uh, matches that are remaining. And if you win, then update it to the winning message. And if there's no match, update it to the card name, flipped, no match. So let's take a look at how that functions. Voice over on Chrome, memory game, home and page. I've added a little cheat sheet with the answers on top. Yeah. <laughs> Page changed. Slide 16. Reset button. Card 1 button. List 16 items. Card 2 button. Heart flipped. Card 3 button. Gamepad flipped. No match. And I will, I, I just silenced it, but I will move on to the next and wait for a second. So you guys can see that if I wait for a second, you're going to see the area described by message. Card 4 button. You have two total moves with three stars left. York. So it told me you have two total moves with three starts left. With for a visual user, M moves I could just two. see right selected. here. Moves two unselected. And then if I find a match, and I'll just do this with my <laughs> keyboard. Um, let's see. Reset but card card two button. Uh, you have card card four card five button. Bell flipped card 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 eight button. Bell flipped. Match found. Seven matches left. 
So Card that's, seven, but that's a lot better experience for the user than we, what we started with, where you couldn't even know where you were and what happened when you flipped a card, what car you flipped, what the icon even was. Card, card for and a button. I have also disabled, whenever there is a match, I have disabled you, uh, I've disabled the button so you don't have to tap through the buttons that are already matched. It's really not useful for users, so I'll show you. Card six, card seven, button, card nine, button, card seven, button. There you go. Okay, so. Space with code containing window home dot who, voice overall. <laughs> Reading code with a screen reader is a whole nother uh, talk. <laughs> Okay, so um, the last thing I did uh, was also how to handle you winning. So um, and this is a component that is inside the, so it's not a route change, but it is a component that I have here. So this is going to show if you complete the game, um, else you're gonna show the game itself. And I'm actually going to go into my store and cheat a little bit. I'm going to just disable all the cards, just leave one very easy game. Um, I just wanna show you guys how I can win. <laughs> <laughs> But um, inside my component, I have added an area described by. So whenever this, this will come in, again, I am focusing it. And I'm actually focusing this one with a, a directive. So let me show you guys. Um, the directive looks like this. And so every time uh, with this directive, any time that this element is inserted, we're going to automatically co call focus in it. And it's focusable because I've added the tab index of negative one. And we've given it an awesome ARIA label by which is going to say congratulations and my winning message, which is right here. So again, I am pairing that ID to that. Oh, let's do this. <laughs> yeah. So I am pairing that ID um, in that ARIA that described by, this labeled by, sorry. <laughs> um, so let's take a look at what that looks like since this is going to be a very awesome game. Voice over, reset button, memory game, page changed, slide six, card two, card one, button, bell flipped, card two, button. Heading level two, congratulations, Woo. memory <laughs> game board group. You won the game with three stars left. You are currently on a heading level two. <laughs> Voice overall. So, thanks. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, I hope that this was able to show uh, not only the screen reader functionality and focus and all of that, but I really want you guys to take away that um, there is a user behind this, and there's a, a whole user experience of how they play and how they interact with the game. And that's something that I want you guys to think about. It's not just ARIA, ARIA labels here and there. Make sure that you're testing this. Like, how does that user flow look like? Um, so I put the GitHub link uh, for this game, and I actually wrote a View, uh, View Vixens workshop to uh, build out this application and, and with accessibility. And uh, if you guys want to learn more about accessibility, I have an accessibility, web accessibility fundamental course in View School. So please check them out. They are giving free passes. <laughs> so grab one. Thank you, guys.